Welcome to Textbook Engineering Problem, where we explore complex engineering problems and discuss different methods for solving them. In this video, I'll be breaking down a problem and discussing different ways to tackle it. However, keep in mind that there is no one correct path for some of these solutions, and I encourage you to share your own insights and thoughts in the comments. Together, we can learn and improve our problem solving skills. So sit back, grab a notebook, and let's dive into today's problem. Today we're working out of Elementary Principles of Chemical Processes, third edition, and we're doing problem number 3.22. The problem statement says, a mixture of ethanol, ethyl alcohol, and water contains 60% water by mass. Part A. Assuming volume additivity of the components, estimate the specific gravity of the mixture at 20 degrees Celsius. What volume in liters of the mixture is required to provide 150 moles of ethanol? 3.22, we have a, uh, by mass, okay, so we've got a certain amount of mass of this mixture. Some of it is ethanol, and some of it is water, okay? And we know that the mass fraction of water is 0 0.600, which means that the mass fraction of ethanol is the rest. Because uh, there's only two things in this mixture, 60% of it's water, so the rest has to be ethanol. So you do one minus 0 0.6, and that gives you 0 0.4. Okay, that one's simple enough. Okay, so then it says, assuming that the volume at assuming volume additivity of components, okay, so what that means is now we assume that the total volume equals the volume of the ethanol plus the volume of the water, which is not a good assumption, actually. So I assume that in the second part, we're going to see how bad of an assumption this is. Um, let's assume that this is true, though, and work from there. So we've got the volume equals the volume of the ethanol plus the volume of the water. Um, volume is equal to is equal to mass divided by density. So we'll do the mass divided by the density. Okay. So let's look up the mass and density, or the the density of um, these two components. So what is the density of water? And what is the density of ethanol? 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. And this density of ethanol is 9 kilograms meters cubed. Now let's look at the molar mass of water and the molar mass of ethanol. 18.02 kilograms per kilomole and 46.07 kilogram per kilomole. There we go. We divide all this by the mass, so we can put it in terms of mass fractions. Okay, and we know the mass fractions and we know the densities, so we can calculate what this density is. Okay, so that is our estimated specific gravity or density. That's our density, so then the specific gravity is equal to 0 0.903. Okay, so that is um, the answer to part A, where we assumed that the volumes could be added in such a way as that. And then it says, what volume in liters of this mixture is required to provide 150 moles of ethanol? So let's turn this into 150 moles of ethanol. Okay. Um, so we need to convert this into volume. So let's go from moles to mass. Using our molar mass here, 4607. Okay, so now we have grams of ethanol, and we need to know um, how much mixture that is. So we have we have that the mixture mass is 0.4 fraction ethanol. So 
0 0.4 grams ethanol goes to one gram of mixture, okay? And then the mixture mass, 0 0.903 grams of mixture per milliliter of mixture to one liter, and then we have liters of mixture, okay? So this equals 19.1 liters of the mixture to get 150 moles of ethanol. Repeat part A with the additional information that the specific gravity of the mixture at 20 degrees is 0 0.93518, making it unnecessary to assume volume additivity. What percentage error results from the volume additivity assumption? Okay, so we repeat this, this function, and we have, for every milliliter of mixture, we have 0 0.93518 grams, one liter, ten to the three milliliters. This equals 18.5. Okay, so the amount of volume uh, error in the volume calculation would be 19.1 minus 18.5 divided by 18.5 equals 0 0.0352 or 3.5 percent error. So this shows that if you assume that the volumes don't change when you add them together, that the volume of the water plus the volume of the ethanol equals the total volume of the mixture. Um, in reality, this is not true. When you mix volumes together, sometimes, let's say you had like a, a bottle of rocks and you had like kind of large rocks in this bottle and then you poured sand into the bottle, would the, would the volumes be equal to each other um, would you have would you start off with the same volume of rocks as you would with sand? Not really because the the sand would kind of fill into the cracks and uh, and so you could pour in quite a bit of sand um, before you actually and it would start filling up some of the empty spaces that were that were in there before that that the rocks couldn't get to. Um, that's kind of how I imagine when you put ethanol and water together, even though they're not having a chemical reaction, um, the water is small and it could potentially fit into different spots or diff fit in different ways that the ethanol normally can't fit in when it's a pure substance by itself. So the water kind of fills in some of the cracks and you end up with a smaller volume than you would normally. But it could also go the other direction just as easily with, with other chemicals where, um, where these chemicals are kind of incompatible and they kind of want to push away from each other on a molecular level. and so. Uh, and, and perhaps they're, they're immiscible, or if they're still miscible, um, you could end up with a volume that's actually larger than, than the volume that you started with. Um, so anyway, that is the answer to part, uh, to part B, and so uh, that ends question 3.22. Thank you for watching, and I hope you found this video helpful in your problem-solving journey. Remember, there are other routes you can take to arrive at the same correct answer, and I encourage you to leave a comment with any additional insights or questions you may have. Also, if you have any specific engineering problems you would like me to cover, please let me know in the comments. Your feedback is valuable, and I look forward to continuing the conversation with you. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more engineering problem-solving videos. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.